friends. Today we have a special episode of Sales Enablement with Andy Paul. As you all know, this podcast is a part of the Ring DNA family. And today we're excited to announce that Ring DNA, the revenue acceleration platform, has been named a cool vendor by Gartner. So, what is a cool vendor, you ask? Well, according to Gartner, a cool vendor is a company offering technology that is innovative, it enables users to do things that they couldn't do before. And a cool vendor is impactful, meaning it has or will have a business impact, not just be technology for its own sake. And a cool vendor is intriguing. So to learn more, head to ringdna.com slash cool vendor. Now to celebrate this, we want to bring you a special conversation between Howard Brown, our CEO and founder of Ring DNA, William Tyree, CMO of Ring DNA, and Ryan Valancourt, Senior Director of Enterprise Sales at Ring DNA. And in this conversation, they'll be discussing how cool companies are using Ring DNA to drive faster growth. Okay, let's jump into it. Here's Howard, William, and Ryan. Hi, I'm William Tyree, CMO of Ring DNA. I'm here with my colleagues, Howard Brown, founder and CEO of Ring DNA, and Ryan Valancourt, Senior Director of Enterprise Sales. We're here to talk about strategies for revenue growth. It's a really important time to talk about that because buyer behavior has completely changed and B2B sales teams are totally failing. So just as some examples, just to kind of frame the conversation, we know that sellers are engaged in only about 17% of the total buyer journey right now, which is astonishing. Further, we know that 44% of millennial buyers want a totally seller-free experience. That's really amazing. And by the way, they're okay with that for purchases in excess of $50,000. It's a serious problem out there. Sellers expect to take buyers along a linear track. That's not really working for buyers. Buyers want sellers to understand their needs. They want a personalized experience. And about two-thirds say that's not even close to happening right now. So, Howard, I'd like to go to you first and just say, why is this happening? Where are sellers totally missing it? It's happening for a lot of reasons. I think buyer expectations have completely changed. We've all been affected by the digital transformation that's happening in the consumer space. So in many ways, we've all been primed by Amazon to expect a friction-free buying experience. We expect the service to know what we want, when we want it, to understand our preferences, and to deliver just in time that information to make that sales process, to make the buying experience the best possible. And What's really fascinating is what's differentiating great companies from the other is really the the customer experience. That is what's differentiating products and services more than anything else. So you can have a great product, you could deliver a great service, but if your customer service function, if your buying function isn't up to par, you're not gonna get the sale. Absolutely. Ryan, your sales teams are in front of enterprise buyers all the time. You know, what are you seeing out there in terms of challenges that, that both sellers and buyers are having? Well, look, I mean, in order to be effective in a complex B2B environment, there's so much that the seller actually has to know and to master. And why do they have to know so much information? Why do they have to master so much information? It goes back to the buyer expectation, right? Buyers in a, in a B2B context why do, they, why do they want that frictionless experience? Why do they want to interact with fewer sellers? Because too many of their experiences are with human beings who do not understand what they're trying to, uh, to solve, don't have empathy for and appreciation for the stakes that they have in, in what they're trying to solve, right? So too many bad experiences. So they want to try to get the information elsewhere, right? So that the challenges that we're having as sales leaders, sales managers, sales organizations is how do we teach and train sales reps to master all of the information that they need to know such that they can be effective consultants, but also to master the the techniques of just listening and learning so that they can understand what it is that the buyer is really trying to solve. Yeah, I think you bring up a really important point, which is buyers aren't really interested in being sold to. They're looking for help and they're looking for help at the moment that they need it. It's no longer about sellers pushing their wares. It's about me having a need, you recognizing it, and you helping me solve a problem. That's what's changed. Bingo. So Ryan, I know you and your teams are in front of enterprise buyers all the time. 
you know, how are sellers prepared for this new reality in general? The reality is most of them aren't, and that's why many of them are, are struggling. The buyers who want to or need to engage with a sales organization to get value out of that, they need to work with someone who is an expert, who's a credible authority, somebody that they get value out of spending time with them constantly. So how do you be that value add consultant? Two things, right? One, you need the ability, you need the skills, the practiced skills to be able to unearth and understand what is it about what this person, what this company is really trying to achieve. Because whatever it is, is probably extremely important and really big for that individual or that group of individuals. And understanding that, it's really hard. You have to learn how to be able to gather that kind of information. But then once you do learn, well, what do you do about it, right? In order to provide that value all along the way, there's so much that a seller, a B2B seller needs to know, needs to learn. How does my service and product differentiate from what else is available in this incredibly complicated market that is also actually confusing those buyers, right? Um, what is what is the right variation of the solutions that I have available to me to solve these complex problems? And so really, really, really smart women and men out there in the sales profession, it, it's complicated to learn and master all this information so that you can ultimately deliver. Absolutely. So Howard, companies need to arm reps and go-to-market teams in general with what they need to succeed. How are the teams that are not hitting it missing the mark? Yeah, well, I think in general, we, we've seen more, just more sales reps, bigger quotas, shorter periods to ramp time. The expectations of sales teams are growing and growing. The cost of sale continues to go up and we're arming them with more and more tools but that doesn't necessarily make them better. We're giving them more tools to learn, more tools to engage, but that's not necessarily driving the value. A lot of these tools, unfortunately, exist in sales, support, success, marketing, and they're collecting a lot of data on the customer or the prospect, but that data is not being surfaced in the moment where sales reps, as Ryan's been talking about, really need it. In order for them to be masters, they need that data in the moment so that they can address the concerns of the buyer right then and there. Yeah. And just to add on to that and not having that information, what is the consequence of that, right? The consequence of that is, you know, a, a buyer has a really important question. They're stuck on something. How do I solve this? And how are you going to help me? If I cannot answer that or provide some value to you, almost immediately, I'm starting to realize that I, I'm not getting enough at ROI out of this interaction. And so, you're going elsewhere. Bingo. As a buyer, if you can't deliver, you're going to go elsewhere. Yeah, and that's I think right. that's what's critical is buyers don't want to be sold to. They want help. You don't walk into a store and ask someone to sell something to you. You ask for help. And when you ask for that help, they better provide it. And that means you have to be contextual, you have to be a master, you have to know about your product and service, you have to understand the competitor, you have to understand the buyer and what their pain is. It's a lot of information and quite frankly, it's overwhelming. And yet, we expect reps to get there, get there faster and perform better. And that's a problem. Yeah, it's a challenge. Absolutely. Especially when you consider that sellers are getting about half the number of quality conversations with buyers today as they were 10 years ago. So you have to absolutely be ready. Almost every market is completely saturated with competitors. You have to surface that information in real time, as you were talking about. Can I just say, William, sorry to yeah. interrupt your train of thought, but if you think about why the number of quality conversations is actually going down, despite the fact that Howard, as you mentioned, we're giving sellers, more sellers, more tools. Salespeople have never been more productive, right? We're all getting more cold calls. I get more cold calls. And the, the more calls, the more dials, they're, they're not getting better, right? They're not actually getting those results. So part of the reason we're having fewer of these conversations is because we've all been primed that when we get a call from a salesperson, it is not going to be worth my time. Yeah, and it's not needed. <laughs> and Gil, right. Going back to William's stats, like they don't want to talk to you until they're ready to talk. And by the way, you're inundating them with calls, emails, text messages, every possible channel, and that gets annoying. And what it does is it causes you to shut down 
and search out as much information. And it's everywhere. Your competitor information is out there. There's review sites where you could collect information. You can go to your website. The last thing I want is to go to your website and learn more about your product and service than you can provide me. So you better know what's on that website and you better not spend a lot of time talking about things that they can get by themselves by shopping online. 100%. So Howard, I know people come to you all the time, CROs, CSOs, asking your advice. What are the things that you're hearing again and again in terms of the top two or three problems? Yeah, look, I think most CROs, most board members, they're wondering why they're not getting the return on the investments that they were promised when they bought technology or training. It's fallen short. And the reality is a lot of these technologies, while great, aren't delivering because they're not providing the insights that are needed. They're not helping them figure out what is working and what is not working. It doesn't help them focus on the reps that need the most help. The whole idea is to look across your entire sales, marketing, and success process and essentially apply an x-ray to it, looking for what are the best reps doing? What is it that they have? It's not magic. They're doing something. There's a science behind this. So if you take your technology and you're not looking across every aspect of what your team is doing, looking for those differentiators, then you're going to miss the mark because that insight, once you know it, once you're able to apply it, not just as training, but consistent coaching, that's when you'll see exponential returns on your investment in tools and in people. Absolutely. What about the 80-20 rule? Does that still apply in sales? Do we still have an issue where 20% of the reps are just so much better at asking discovery questions, using reflective listening, and we need to know how to benchmark that and scale it across teams? Yeah, a thousand percent. And the problem is we just have no idea why those 20% are overperforming the rest of that group, right? Howard was talking about like we don't need necessarily you know, more data or, or more dashboards. Really good example. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that to be effective in sales, you got to be a really good listener. But your average sales manager has absolutely no insight into who on the team actually is an effective listener, right? And, and to be able to show across the team the correlation between certain behaviors like really good listening and results. And so we don't teach to it. We don't train to it. The reps, that 80%, they don't know what good sounds like. They don't know what it looks like to be an effective listener. Yeah, I love the analogy of comparing a sales rep and a sales manager or coach to a rock star, all-star player. Because what's amazing about athletes, today we register every move they make. We look at their strength training. We look at how they move. We look how they shoot the ball, how they throw a ball. We are analyzing every part of the process to help them improve in those areas where they need the most improvement. We're attempting to apply that same technology to sales reps, to the sales process, to go to market teams. We want to look at the entire body. We want to look at what needs the most improvement and why. The problem is, to your point, you got 11 people to manage. How do you know who to listen to, who to pay attention to? It's nearly impossible. And so we need to use data, artificial intelligence insights to surface those things that are out of norm, whether it's below or above, so that we know where and when and who to pay attention to, to turn everybody into rock stars, athletes, masters. Yeah. And the good news is that the technology available to all of us has evolved so much that it actually is possible now to identify exactly those insights and identify those behaviors and, that, and patterns that are correlating with certain kinds of results. We also are living in an era where sales tenure is really short, right? Reps are moving around a lot. Only like 28% of SDRs are even getting promoted to the next level. So if we could reinforce this training, do you think we could actually see an era where close percentages go up? Well, we better. <laughs> Right. <laughs> if we don't make changes and we just continue to throw more and more and more, the cost of acquisition of a new customer will continue to go up. Your churn rate isn't going to get any better, right? Because customers have more choices. And so you have to provide a better experience, whether it's your support experience, your sales experience. You have to constantly think about what it is 
that your customer needs. And so we don't live in a day and age where it's not possible to deliver that experience. It's more than possible. We collect information from marketing, from sales, from support, from every interaction. We know what top performers are doing. Now it's time to take that data and to present it in context. Because I can't ask a rep to know every industry, to know every title, every ICP, to know our tool and everybody else's tool. But what we can do is we can provide them real context, real situational awareness through artificial intelligence so that when they are on a call, when they are in a situation, that is presented to them. They don't have to go scurrying to find it. They don't have to know every play that they need to run. That data, those plays are presented to them when they need it most. And because of that, we all expect a better model with a better return on investment. 100%. Now, the good news is that we've entered a new era, right? We all know the world has changed. We have a lot of talk about the revenue operations model. Companies that are adopting revenue operations are, on average, I think, doing about 20% more revenue than their peers in their categories. That's big time, right? And I think it's through that centralized data model that we actually get access to some of that data that can inform these conversations in real time. But Howard, there's pitfalls. Yeah, and you're going to get me off on a bit of a tangent here around RevOps. And I love the excitement about RevOps. And I think it's awesome that 20% are seeing a lift or whatever the number is. The problem is... Most RevOps, they're defining as a CRO or somebody in charge of revenue, or, uh, you know, we're going to look at our data infrastructure, or we're going to buy a RevOps tool. RevOps is really about process and data and tooling and all of that combined. And yet, you start making changes to your data infrastructure, to the dynamics of your leadership team. That takes time, energy. You're talking about quota changes. That's not easy. And so in today's world where your board is expecting a change in revenue, not in six months, not in a year, not in two years via RevOps transformation, they're expecting it 30, 60 days. So we can do something about that. You don't have to upset the whole apple cart. You can apply tools that look at your marketing, your sales, your rep performance, and extract that insight in real time to make teams more effective and more efficient. Makes total sense. Ryan, what are some specific examples of companies that, that we're working with that are doing this really well? Like, Give us a couple anecdotes of specifically how it's moving the needle. I mean, I'll give you something really simple. Talk about you know needing results in 30, 60 days. Let, let's start there. So our customers are arming sales reps with real-time notifications in their sales conversations. Imagine you know, everybody's using technology right now. You make a phone call you know, using technology on your computer. But when I call Howard and Howard says, hey, yeah, sounds great. Send me an email. Right? That's an objection, right? Well, guess what? That company, our customers know the best way to overcome that objection. Right? For some companies, it sounds something like this. Oh, I'd be happy to send you an email. What about what I shared so far is most interesting to you? And about half the time, that will actually keep the conversation going, still give you the opportunity to book that meeting. But that sales rep, they're learning objection handling. They're learning their new product in their space. They're not going to remember that among the 50 million things they learned in training. But when they have that little screen pop on their phone, they overcome that objection. Or when Howard says, well, how are you different from big name competitor? Maybe I remembered learning about big name competitor on day two of training, but I kind of forget how we're different. I've got a little pop on my screen, right? It gives me that distilled messaging and I tell Howard, yeah, okay, cool. Like I'll, I'll, I'll meet with you next week. So what we're doing is we're helping our customers, their sales reps, master the most important parts of conversations, both top of the funnel like those examples, but also later down the funnel so that they're eliminating all of those mistakes that anyone is going to make when they're learning new information, right? It's about that pattern recognition and that behavior. The result of that is reps ramping much faster and also just significantly more pipeline faster. Yeah. What I love, and obviously you're describing RIM DNA, and it's what we're so excited about, is we're taking all of this data that exists in Salesforce, exists in your phone calls, it exists in your sales playbooks, we're quickly integrating that in days 
We're unleashing it on the sales teams. We're giving the sales leaders immediate visibility into what's working and what's not. And we're adapting the playbook in real time through guided selling, through conversation intelligence, and then ultimately through our Yoda AI product, which in turn is delivering that insight in the moment, which is ultimately what is driving the most productivity, and the change in results. I'll give you an example. Speaking of Ring DNA, I'm talking about what's happening with our customers. I'll I'll take everybody sort of inside our sales organization. So Ring DNA is a product that only works with Salesforce. So our SDR team, when they're making prospecting calls, right, they need to verify that the account that they're calling on uses Salesforce. Basic pre-qualification requirement. Prior to having access to this technology, we had a problem on the SDR team, which is especially new SDRs, they would spend 15 minutes in maybe a great conversation, book a meeting with an account that we'd find out doesn't use Salesforce. What a profound waste, not only of our time, but a waste of the customer's time. Time about bad buying experience. Mm-hmm. So when we introduce this technology, now we can enforce that behavior. When we launched this for our SDR team on any given week, they were getting notifications from this Yoda AI product about 1,200, 1200 times per week across the team. So that was 1,200 times that an SDR, a certain point into the conversation, forgot to verify, oh, by the way, we use Salesforce, right? Four weeks later, 150 times a week. So that is a, what, what is it? a dramatic reduction in that mistake. We're getting time back. They're making more calls. They're having more conversations. That's a simple example, but those really do build up. It's faster ramp. There's more conversations, more pipeline. Absolutely. Now, Howard, as a CEO, I know you, you care a lot about morale, uh, which affects churn. If you're a rep and you can actually track that kind of progress, what kind of impact does that have across the sales team on terms of training, retention, things like that? Yeah, well, let's face it. We all want to perform at our best and we all want to move quicker. And if reps are able to onboard quicker, if they're able to start hitting numbers, if they're able to perform and feel like they're able to better connect with customers, that changes your entire organization because you're building an organization around growth, whether it's personal growth, professional growth. These tools enable you to perform better. And if you're performing better, you're feeling better. And what's so exciting is these notifications, this training doesn't just happen from top down. The best reps are the ones that want to continue to learn and grow. And what we're seeing is that they're enabling the tools to help them be exceptional at their craft. And that I couldn't be more excited about. I got to add one more thought to that question around morale and like employee churn. A big reason I even came to Ring DNA is because as a sales manager to previous company, which I adored and loved, I was so frustrated by my inability as a sales manager to understand what was working and what wasn't. I was banging my head against the wall. I was trying to teach all these sales reps to sell the way that I sold, but that that's impossible, right? Everybody sells sort of in different ways. And I, I couldn't figure out really how to move the needle. And I basically said, I'm going to go figure out how to you know, use data to move the needle because that's what we all want. We want to see that when, when, when we make changes, when we have theories about what is going to work, that we can test and measure whether it did or it didn't. And sometimes when it doesn't, it's just as exciting. The point is being able to actually know, right? That's what's keeping certainly me, but also the team just excited about getting better on a weekly basis. Yeah, what I love about that example is, look, the reason... I brought you into Ring DNA is you're the best sales coach I've ever met. You're an incredible sales leader, but how do I bottle you up? How do I help you coach at scale? How can I take what you do with your individual reps, package that up and give it to the masses? And that exponential effect that you have brought by putting you essentially, I have Ryan built into the Yoda AI, therefore all the reps are gaining from your goodness. And that's what's so special. Okay, so we've talked about time to value and how important that is, right? You're in front of your board, you're a CRO, you're a CSO, and you need to make a big impact in 30, 60, 90 days. But that's not the rep that enterprise software applications have, right? Howard, how is this different? Absolutely. So through the utilization of artificial intelligence, modern sales tools today out of the box, come with insights built into the solution so that they can immediately 
start delivering that value? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're talking about is it's thought leadership baked into technology, right? Because, you know, I shared a little bit about my story managing previous sales teams, and I was struggling with connecting the dots between, you know, revenue results and, and actually how we got there, right? I didn't have the tools to coach with data. Well, most sales managers on day one, when you invest in technology like this, they don't necessarily know how to go and find the right insights, right? But the best technology today is giving that insight on day one and instructive for those managers and what to do about it. Guys, this has been amazing. I really love this. I personally learned so much today. I would encourage everybody, if we can be helpful in any way, reach out to myself, Howard, or Ryan. You can also learn about us at ringdna.com. Okay, friends, that's it for this episode. To learn more about why Gartner named RingDNA a cool vendor, head over to RingDNA slash cool vendor. And thank you so much for investing your time with me today. As always, we're grateful for your support of the show. Until next time, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone.